today I will be talking about quad account, uh, which is uh, using artificial intelligence and computer vision to analyze histopathology images. Um, I'm Josiano Matiza. I go to Wellesley College in Boston, and over this summer, I was working with uh, Dr. Sada at the University of Florida. Uh, today, I will talk, I will introduce the topic, what are the images I'm talking about, um, and then I will talk about the problem statement we're trying to solve, the methods, and then the results that we have so far. Uh, first of all, uh, you will hear me a lot talking about whole slide images and uh, whole slide images are also known as, I mean, whole slide image and also known as virtual microscopy is a way of like scanning uh, tissue images in a uh, in repetitive frames so that you have like this huge image with X, Y, and Z coordinates so that um, pathologists can be able to zoom in and uh, and see the details of the tissue. And uh, during uh, whole slide imaging, there are different staining techniques. And uh, in my project, I dealt with images uh, with two different stainings, one which is immunohistochemistry, which is on this side, and as you can see, um, it helps highlight some of the cells we're interested in, in this case, which are podocytes, and I will elaborate on what types of cells they are. And then the other one, which is PAS, which is um, a much cheaper staining. Did you say something? Which is a, a much... Okay which is a much cheaper staining technique, but however, it doesn't highlight any nuclei different from the others. So podocytes, which are the types of cells that are, my project focuses on, there are highly specialized cells in the kidney, in the glom, as you can see on this picture. And uh, they help uh, filter urine together with the, uh, with endothelium um, in the in the glom. And so podometrics, which includes the number of podocytes, the density, the volume, um, there are very important factors in, uh, in understanding the development and progression of CKD, which is a kidney disease and also other kidney diseases. And so having a proper tool to be able to quantify um, what the sites is a very, very important um, question. And so previously there have been um, efforts to segment uh, for the sites from these images and uh, one method which segments them from the IHC stained images um, uses computer vision um, techniques to, to uh, segment the dark colored uh, dots, which are in this case for the sites. Uh, but there's also another method that was developed in the lab that I'm working in, which is a, a deep learning based uh, tool to directly segment from PAS images. However, this tool goes up to 80% and we're working on how we can uh, improve on this to have a higher accuracy of uh, detecting the photocytes. And so the problem statement that I'm working on is to develop an accurate method to segment photocytes from PAS stained images so that at the end of the day we can, um, for example, have a, have a picture like this with the highlighted photocytes. So um, the data processing um, step of my internship, I had um, 17 IHC whole slide images and their corresponding PAS stained images. So that's in total 14 whole slide images. And these are like really huge images around like 200 megabytes per image. And uh, so because they're really big, um, it's it's really hard to like process the whole image at the same time. So we work on um, 
extracting small um we call them tiles but it's like cropping the image uh with with other areas that we're interested in and having smaller images in form of png or jpeg and so um in this case i was interested in segmenting the glomeruli because the podocytes are found in the glomeruli so i did segment i mean uh extracted the glomeruli from the ihc and the PAS slides, and then used uh, computer vision uh, techniques, uh, which is one of them, which is thresholding. It's like a process of uh, of like where the you can make your image black and white, and so you can choose uh, to have a certain threshold. There are thresholding techniques available. I used least thresholding. And so where the podocytes, uh, I can make them white and then everything else in the background um, make it black. And so there is also color deconvolution, which is a process of separating the colors. And so I can like easily extract um, the, the, dark, the darker colors and then be, have uh, an alternative masks uh, outlining where the podocytes are. And so once I was done with uh, identifying where the podocytes are on the IHC images, uh, the next step was to overlay these annotations on the whole slide image. And then once I have overlaid them on the whole slide image, I can now overlay them on the PAS image, on their corresponding PAS image to have a ground truth for training my models. And so this was probably, um, one of the hardest tasks to like overlay um, these images on top of each other and it ended up failing. And so um, it was really hard um, to have these annotations overlay them on the PAS image because the annotations um, well shifted unevenly. So it was like really hard to like have maybe an X and Y coordinate to shift the annotations to. And so we um, came up with um, another idea of how can we um, how can we start from the PAS images and then uh, have like an IHC image. Um, and so which is where we thought of Psychogan. So Psychogan is um it's like a foundation model now. Um, it helps in like image translation. So for example, if I have a, a lot of pulse images and then a lot of zebra images, I can train a cyclogan model to translate between the two so that the time I give it a host image, it can give me back um, a zebra image. Um, and this is the mathematical expression of it. Uh, you have two functions, G and F, one translating from X to Y and another one trans translating from uh, Y to X. And in my case, it's uh, translating between uh, IHC staining and uh, PAS staining so that if I give it an IHC image, it would uh, translated to a PAS. And also if I give it a PAS, it can translate it to an IHC stain the image. And I have some of the pictures um, of the translation in work where the real image is like the original input that I gave the data, I mean the model to test it. And then the fake image is, uh, is the synthesized, um, PAS image corresponding to the IHC. And then the reconstructed the A is uh, the model takes the fake image and then tries to reconstruct it using uh, the function from B to A. And uh, I also have uh, some sample translating between um, PAS to IHC in this case, where I give it a PAS image and then it translates to IHC and you can see it tries to uh, also highlight the podocytes in, in this image. And the reconstructed B in this case is also uh, taking the fake one and passing it through the generator from A to B and then tries to reconstruct it in this way. And um, 
Psychogun uh, to evaluate how it's doing. Um, it's evaluated using SSIM, which is the structural similarity index. It measures um, how two images are similar to each other. So in this case, it was measuring how the original image is uh, similar to a synthesized image. And uh, our score was 0 0.92, which is really good. Uh, I mean, not extremely good, but like really, really good. And uh, so now that we can translate from PIS to IHC and from IHC to PIS, we have to come up with a method to segment the IHC um, where uh, it comes in handy segmentation um, with artificial intelligence. There have been a lot of um, efforts in trying to develop um, models that can segment um, images and segmentation in this case is like if you give it if you give a model an image and then uh, for example in this case if you give a model an image and then you give it also um, a mask showing it where the tree is then the model will try to um, identify all the trees in other subsequent images that you will give it and so one of the commonest uh, architectures in segmentation is a unit model where you input an image, it goes uh, through several convolution non-neural networks, and then it outputs a segmentation, a segmented map of, of the image. So I uh, trained a unit model to be able to segment the IHC uh, images. In this case, I used an attention unit, which is uh, slightly different from the unit, but to, uh, to improve on it, to pay attention on uh, the details in the image. And um, as you can see in the pictures, um, this is the true mask um, that I got from the original computer vision uh, segmentation techniques. And then this is predicted by the model and uh, I have uh, mathematical scores of how this is doing after but by eye you can see uh, that it's doing a pretty good job to identify different photosites and uh, we also made some effort to try and train another unit model and train it directly on PAS images but uh, use masks that are hand annotated. So Smant in our lab had already annotated some of the uh, images, very few, but like um, hand annotated. So we're sure uh, these were like put the sites uh, from this image. And so these are the predicted masks and you can see it's not doing as good as the previous one. Um, one, because uh, most of the nuclei in this image, they look the same. So it's really hard for the model to learn and uh, try to segment. And so some of the evaluation metrics that we used, um, uh, the TP stands for true positives and then TN, true negative, FP, false positives and, and FN, false negatives. So if I talk about accuracy, I'm talking about um, the ratio of correctly predicted pixels, uh, both like the white ones and the black ones. So if a pixel was supposed to be white, uh, is it white? And if a pixel was supposed to be black, is it black? And uh, precision is, uh, is a measure of correctly predicted positive pixels. So it's like if... Uh, if a pixel was supposed to be white, is it white? So, um, and then there's F1 score, which um, kind of finds the balance between precision and recall, which is, um, and then there's intersection of a union, which is a metric to to see like how overlapping are the, pred the predicted segmentation and the ground truth. So if I have my, mask and my predicted masks, how well do they over, overlap? And so for my PAS unit, it had a really high accuracy, but I will explain why 
this is, but other metrics, uh, most of them were really low. And then for the IRC unit, it had a consistent, really good score with like accuracy of 0 0.99, precision 0 0.96, IOU 0 0.8, recall 0 0.82, my F1 score of 0 0.89. And so the reason why the PAS uh, has a really high accuracy and very low other scores is because um, it it has a has like a, a lot of white dots in the glomeruli area. So um, the accuracy measures how many of the white uh, the white ones are white. So there is a lot of hitting the white spots with the small white uh, predictions, but that are not actually the shape or uh, the true uh, other sites. Uh, so a little bit of what we talked about, uh, I mean, what I did in brief is I worked on processing whole slide images using computer vision. Um, I've never had worked with whole slide images. I had only worked with a small, uh, uh, PNG images of cats and dogs. And uh, I worked on uh, training a cyclogan model to translate between IHC and PAS stained glomeruli, and also trained two segmentation unit models. Um, and the IHC based model shows promising numbers. Um, special thanks to the computational microscopy lab at University of Florida. Um, I'm very grateful that Dr. Sada uh, gave me this opportunity to be in his lab. Uh, it was a very interesting project. And also I really liked how um, broad, like working from the image all the way to predicting the results and overlaying everything back to the image um, it was a lot of things to learn. Uh, thank you to Ahmed, uh, my mentor for answering all of my questions and uh, answering my team messages every time I had like any questions. Thanks to everyone in the lab. Um, I really worked with uh, most of them. They were there to answer my questions anytime about programming or just the images and the biology. Um, also thanks to the NIH Hub program uh, for this opportunity. Um, and funding this internship. Uh, any questions? Thank you.